Hi. When you look at this locomotive, you see the ground lights and the step lights. What I'm going to do today is show you how I assemble ground and step lights from my kits. This should help you do your own assembly. And in a future video, I'll show you how I actually put the ground lights and step lights on my locomotives. first step is to measure out some lengths of 40 gauge magnet wire. To strip and tin the magnet wire, I have molten solder in a solder pot. And all I have to do is stick the magnet wire into the molten solder and it strips and tins that magnet wire at the same time. Needless to say, that hot solder is very hot. Don't ask me how I learned that. Here you can see a strip of magnet wire and an SMD LED, an 0201, on a Teflon block. And I've got a steel block that I'm going to use for a holder and a heat sink. When I do the second joint, the heat sink is very important. Without the heat sink, you solder one end and the other end goes loose and free again. Now I'm cutting the magnet wire so that just a little bit of the tin section is available adding a little bit of chip quick solder and then with just a trace of solder on the end of that soldering iron after I get it all stabilized making the joint. Now I'll test the joint And also bend the wire so they can get the LED from the other side. Positioning the LED is important so I can get to it with a soldering iron. There's not much room to move. and having it stable so that I can get stable enough to get that soldering iron just to touch that pad and the magnet wire at the same time is a trick. So patience and perseverance here is important. And just like the last time, we'll get the magnet wire, the flush cutters out, red is for the positive side, cut the right length of magnet wire, tinned magnet wire, add the chip quick. Try to get the magnet wire in the right position. So that the flattest part of the LED is going to be on, have the most contact with that magnet wire. Some joints go easier than others. 
This one's giving me a little bit of grief. Looks like I got it that time, though. Again, just to test to see if the joint is good, give it a good pull. Not a wicked pull, because that'll break that magnet wire. Next thing I want to do is pull those wires perpendicular to the face of the LED so that they're ready to thread into the fixture. These are fixtures that fell off the rafts, and there's a little nib on the end of them. And I'm just cutting that nib off so that that fixture face is smooth. The way I get around that is when I have a good raft, a complete raft, then I'll just sidle up to the joint between the fixture or the shade and the holder on the raft. That's an essential piece or it'll bend over. Most times the fixtures are just caught on the bottom of the rafts and that's what I'm doing now is I'm just, it doesn't take much to disconnect the fixtures from the raft. I haven't found another use for the rafts yet, so I've been throwing them away. That's a sacrilege in model railroading. That'll leave nice, clean fixtures to cut. On the bottom of the fixture, there's a nib that fits into a hole that you drill into the locomotive. It isn't essential. You can uh, cut that nib off and go right back to the battery box or to the electrical box, and that works. Or in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it off so that the shade is what I'm working with. Sprue cutters are very handy for this. After you get it set, Then they cut pretty easily. Get them square, cut, and there you go. This is one more view of how I go through and cut those fixtures away from the holder. This is a number 80 drill, so it's 13 and a half thousandths in diameter. Occasionally, the hole will, in the bottom of the fixture will close up and these are rugged enough so that you can use the number 80 drill to open them out. This is that 40 gauge magnet wire that we were working with a couple minutes ago and you thread it through the bottom hole. Both wires will fit in there. The next thing I'll do is I'll slide that fixture all the way up the wire. The copper colored wire is the negative wire. You can see I didn't get them quite square, so I'll square them off. Pull it in close. 
And now what I want to do is make sure that the two wires are coming off that back surface of that LED and uh, very parallel to the front face of that LED so they'll fit into that fixture well. I have a pin vise with a piece of 15 thousandths wire and I have just a little bit of super glue or cyanoacrylate on that that I'll just put on the bottom of the LED. That in, does insulation on, on the joints and makes it so that that LED will stick in the fixture. I'll get it back into the scene here in a minute. And what I'll do is just to make sure that LED is set before the L, before the uh, CA sets is make sure that it's in the right position. What I'm doing here is something that you'll probably do, and that is to take a piece of paper towel and distilled water on a old piece of plastic overpacking. You can see me shaking up the acrylic paint that I got from Walmart, the cheapest paint I could possibly find. And it works fairly well. The fixtures really don't like any kind of primer or any kind of paint that I've found so far. The resin in the 3D printing is just paint phobic. The brush is a 5 aught that's been used a lot, so it's probably down to 10 aught now. Light's critical. We'll get that set here. And I have a magnifier that I'll get squared away also. Being able to see these is a very important part. When I paint this, what I'll do is I'll start from the bottom. I want to make that joint and that area at the bottom of the, of the shade as stable as possible. So the paint's going to go down onto the wire. It doesn't need insulation there, just support. Get that magnifier in the right spot. Do a good job of painting my thumb. And now finally onto the shade. Again, from the bottom up through to the top. The nice thing about the 0201 LEDs is they fit down into that fixture, so it you don't have to be awfully, awfully careful, just awfully careful when you're painting the top of the fixture. The magnet wire turns out to be fairly stiff so that it makes a good holder. You can see now I'm going to do around the top of the thick of the shade. Next step is to test the LED and also look for uh, places where the light's shining through. Again, that resin is fairly uh, paint phobic, so you will have places that you have to touch up. That's what I'll do right now is just touch it up. That also assures me when I'm making them that when I send them to a customer 
that they work. Found with LEDs, if, if they work, then they're going to work for a good long time. It's a nice technology. Go around the outside of the top of that again. And my finger, too. That's important, painting your finger, you know. To attach these or route them through to the printed circuit board, the decoder or the small connector board on the decoder buddy, hopefully, what I'll do is I'll take a little piece of stranded wire. This happens to be wire that comes on LEDs from China. It's good, good silicone wire. It works really well. It doesn't shrink away when you heat it. And you'll see we're going to heat it up pretty well in, in a second. It also makes a better connection to a printed circuit board than the magnet wire. The magnet wire is essential for the 0201 LEDs, and it's nice to, wire, to root through a locomotive shell and tack with glue. Either CA inside... Uh, a shell really doesn't make a lot of difference. That's the magnet wire. I'm going to wrap it around the tinned part of the stranded wire a couple, three, four times. I'm going to pull the rest of that uh, chip quick off my knuckle. Put a little bit more on the joint. So now it's all tinned and, and ready to solder. You'll notice with the solder, I really stick around there with the solder for a long time. That, that would have made a joint on regular wire a long time ago, and now I'm going in and doing it again. But what I'm doing is I'm stripping that magnet wire at the same time I'm soldering the joint. just like in the solder pot before. Next part's to clean off the parts that are excess and just leave the joint. And what I'll do when I put that into the shell of the locomotive is I'll use either CA or goo or rubber cement doesn't make any difference on the inside of the locomotive what it looks like but it makes the wire routing very nice and when I put a dab of glue on that it'll insulate it also these are pieces of ten thousandths fiber optic and I'll feed those through the fixture I'll tack these either directly to the locomotive if they have an LED on the bottom side that just kind of shines all over the place and could look better. Or on the bottom of an 0402 LED. Here's some cyanoacrylate glue again. Back to the pin vise with a 15,000 piano wire in it. That's my favorite type of cyanoacrylate glue. Just add a tad, just a tad of CA to that fiber optic and then butt it up against the smooth side of that happens to be a spooger but whatever you have that's metal so that the bottom is is flush
Now positioning the fixture so that I can set it right onto the 02, 0402 LED is important. That's not going to work. Let's try it the other way. Yeah, that's better. So what's in the glass jar is just a little bit of zip kicker. You can see I'm just going to touch that puddle of CA with an assembly and pull the LED out of the zip kicker. And that leaves a little bit damp. So when I put the 0402 on that surface, it sticks immediately. Then what I'll do is I'll come back afterwards and just add a little bit more CA to reinforce that joint. That should make it all the way to you pretty easily if it's in an envelope. In one piece instead of two. The next part is to take those sprue cutters and just as flush as I can get it to the top of that shade, chop off the, fib the rest of the fiber optic. And what will show there is just a little bit of the fiber optic, and it really looks to me like a light bulb. Whether it's LED or incandescent, it looks like a light bulb. And then the procedure becomes the same again, just to get it painted up. What I do is I start from the bottom to make sure that the leads to the LED are painted, the LEDs painted, and the fixtures painted, so no light leaks at all. And I'll test that uh, with, a, with the uh, battery again before, uh, before I let it, let it get out. Actually, I've got a power supply. I don't use a battery, but a 9-volt battery with a 1K resistor, a 2K resistor, or a 10K resistor uh, in line would be a perfect way to check those. That pretty well wraps up the video. What I'm going to do is... Uh, leave you with a locomotive that I put together. Have a good.